Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. And I uh, hope you know that you are missed. Um, you are definitely missed. And uh, the last time that we gathered in this space, if you remember, was for the journey, cross, and crucifixion. You know, we had that night here in the church that went through the stations of the cross. And who would have thought, you know, a week later, we've kind of been living that, um, that journey of struggle and loss and suffering and pain. And uh, it's been tough. One of the things that we miss the most are all of you. Um, that coming to pray on those Monday nights and to learn and to share faith and to do service uh, was a great gift to the parish. Never mind, I hope, a good thing for you and for your families. And so, you know, we'd all be fools to say that it's not different. Things are a little different these days. Even when it comes to faith formation this year, things are going to be a little different. Um, and we have a choice, you know. We can give in to that and just kind of say, well, I guess it's going to be terrible and it's not going to be any, that is not the way it's supposed to be. And, or we can say somehow something good will come from this. And that's my hope and my prayer tonight. So we begin level eight faith formation. And this will be one of the times that we gather in person um, and hopefully maybe in the, you know, after a certain time and maybe things will loosen up a little bit and it'll be in a safer place and we can even have more of those opportunities to come together in person. And so we begin that tonight with this opening celebration or this opening liturgy. Just some things about how we pray now so that you know, okay? The first is that we need the presider, um, the per like me, and when we celebrate Mass, we don't wear a mask um, when we leave prayer. So we generally stay up here, okay? So um, I'll always kind of have that space from you. But during, and when the ministers read or, or sing, they don't wear their masks just so that they can be heard. But I would ask you and just tell you that any time you come to church at St. John the Evangelist, for now, any time you're in any of the buildings of St. John the Evangelist, you have to wear a mask. And if you're like me, you can't stand them. But we do it for the good of the other. And so uh, remember that your mask has to be on the entire time and it has to cover your mouth and your nose. When you come to Mass on Sunday, um, hopefully you're doing that or you can be open to doing that, you do the same thing. You wear your mask the whole time. You can only come in those doors, sanitize your hands, and the only time your mask comes down is to receive Holy Communion. Um, and again, we do that just to keep everyone safe. After the prayer service tonight, it's not Mass tonight. After the prayer service tonight, um, when we're dismissed, I just would ask that everybody leaves through the side doors, okay? I'm pretty sure the lights will be on by the time you leave. You're all reminded of me to change the timers. Um, so we'll, you'll go, everyone exits out the side doors at St. John's whenever we gather in the church. Um, and after every service, we have to clean all the pews. So, good news. We have this, the light just came on. Um, we have the spray bottles and the towels, okay? We just need your arms, all right? So maybe after the prayer service, if a few people could stay, we can just wipe down all the pews so that they're clean for tomorrow morning when we have daily Mass and the celebration of the Eucharist then, okay? So we come together to pray. We begin another year of preparation for confirmation, a different year, but good things come even in the most difficult of times. That's the story of our salvation. It's the story of our cross. So let's uh, prepare ourselves tonight and uh, really be open. And you know the things that we need to do. Make sure your phone is off, okay? Um, and just put that stuff away. And uh, let's just ask the Lord to help us to be open, uh, open to his presence and to the many ways that he wants to make himself known to you and to me. Good evening. Before our prayer service begins, I would like to go over some music with you that we'll be singing tonight. Um, please open your worship aid to page two, to the responsorial psalm, Lord, send out your spirit. I will sing it once, and then I'll ask you to sing it with me. renew the face of the earth. 
Now sing it with me. Ready? Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Now, I'm pretty sure the only reason why I couldn't hear you singing is because of those masks. So we're just going to have to try a little harder to raise our voices to the heavens. Let's try that again. Ready? Here we go. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Well done. Thank you very much. Good evening again, and welcome to St. John the Evangelist. Before our prayer service begins, please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices so as not to distract from our worship. Tonight, we gather to celebrate the Level 8 opening prayer service as the 8th graders in our parish community enter their final full year of formal preparation for the Sacrament of Confirmation. All of the music for tonight's prayer service can be found in the worship aid provided for you tonight. Now let's stand together and join in the refrain of our entrance hymn, Send Us Your Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And friends, we continue as the second year of confirmation preparation begins. We continue with the Gospel of John, the foundation of our work last year. And we come, hopefully, to know that Christ more and more, the light in the midst of darkness, the one who heals and forgives us, the one who saves us by his death and resurrection. If we want to create a place for the Spirit to dwell, we need to know that Christ ever more personally, ever more deeply. And so we come to pray, here in person, in our church, and those who pray with us through the gift of technology, hoping that we begin this year with open hearts, ready for all that Jesus wants to reveal to you, and to me. And so, let us pray.
O God, you've taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and never rejoice in, <clears throat> never rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let's be seated as together now we listen to God's word. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to the Lord, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you, no slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me, and you also testify, because you've been with me from the beginning. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Can I just make a request uh, before we begin the homily? I know it's a stressful time, and if uh, we just need to use our phones, if there's an emergency, I ask you just to go out into the lobbies um, rather than using your phone uh, in church, if that's okay. Um, we all have a lot of stuff, and I know these days more than ever we're, we're nervous. So if you need to use your phone, if there's an emergency, just ask you to go in the fellowship area or to go outside um, the side vestibules as opposed to using them during the prayer service. Thanks. You know, uh, one of the jobs I have, besides being the pastor here, is I have the privilege to celebrate Mass in jail. Now you might say, Father John, that's really a privilege? Actually, it is, because no one ever comes late, no one ever leaves early, and if anyone gives me a hard time, there are people in the back with weapons to keep me safe. So it's a pretty good space. But one of the things that I am uh, always fascinated by when I celebrate Mass in jail are tattoos. I am fascinated by them. And I, some weeks, when I celebrate Mass there, I don't want to give a homily, and I just want to ask everyone to pick out their favorite tattoo and explain it to me. Because they have deep meaning to people, so much so that they're marking their body. And I don't know that I want to know all the meanings for all the tattoos, but there's a deep meaning, at least at some point or some moment in life. And the truth is, um, those who get tattoos, you're kind of, you kind of got them forever. You know, they have surgeries and things, but they're real tough to remove. They're kind of marked forever. In baptism, we're marked forever. It's not a physical tattoo that somebody could see, but it's a much deeper, a much more profound, a much more permanent mark. And rather than it be something that might be seen from the outside, it's something that transforms our inside, who we are. You know, uh, I was thinking of this building, and uh, I was talking to somebody. I was in another, I was in a different state this weekend celebrating a wedding, and uh, I was talking to the pastor there, and he said, tell me about your parish. And I was telling him about this building. And he had to sit down when I told him what happened. And some of you know, you know, uh, almost three years ago, uh, someone came into this building and tried to burn it down. And uh, some of you may have been here in those days, and, you know, the, the damage to the building, uh, to, the, to the inside of the building, was pretty intense. And uh, it was pretty hard. But in the midst of that darkness... And it was even physically dark in here. Everything was covered with soot. We always started to see glimmers of light. And there was a time in that building process, some of you might have done this, 
um, if, you, if we ever look behind these walls, you would see marks. How many people remember that? Cool. And so uh, a few months after the fire, you know, we came in here and we invited everybody after Sunday masses and in the school and faith formation classes to mark, to mark the building, to sign the building, or to bring a prayer card or to put a memento inside the walls of the church. And they kind of tell the story of the people here. You know, I think of Father Michael. You know, Father Michael uh, became the chaplain at St. Anthony's High School, but he put a big prayer card of St. Michael the Archangel right underneath that window. My dad, when he came, when he was alive, he used to sit kind of right over there, and I put his prayer card in the wall over there. There's a, a young person I know from the school that he wanted to sign the wall over there because that was where he received Holy Communion. That was the row he sat in. There was uh, someone who wrote over there by that candle behind the wall, and he said, you know, may the man who did this not be the cause of our division, but the reason for our coming together. On the wall over there, there's a family that I know pretty well who has had a real tough road, and they're like, Father John, we want to all sign this pillar. And we all signed it together. Those marks and so many others that fill these walls... They never need to be seen because their story is told in the life of faith. Their story is told in the church and our work to think of the work of St. Michael to overcome evil with good. They're told in the work of our belief that in death, life is changed, not ended. They're told in the story and the power of the Eucharist. They're told in the story of forgiveness. They're told in the story of hope, even when things seem so hard. For we who gather here, that's the story of our faith. That's the story of the cross. In dying, there's rising. That there is no pain, there is no struggle, there is no sickness, there is no pandemic, there is no violence, there is no poverty, there is no death that we cannot come through. Nothing. I think a lot of us got a real-life lesson in that over these past six or seven months. Living in times that we have never seen in our lifetimes, in the midst of some darkness and some struggle and some division and some pain and some dying and some suffering. But we come through it. That's the story of the cross. And that's what we are to come more deeply into in this year ahead. We're coming to know that Christ who suffers and dies for us. And in his going, he sends us the spirit to bring us new life. That's the hope of confirmation. You're going to be marked forever. Not on the outside, not where anyone will see it. But marked in a way that says, I know, I know there is a reason for my hope. You know, in the days after the fire here, some three or four years ago, that was the line from Scripture that we kept praying with. There's a reason for our hope. This year, three years later, we put together this cross. I don't know if you can see it. You can turn around, you can see it. And that cross was made during Lent with all of our desires and hopes and prayers. And obviously, Lent was very different this year. But when it came to Pentecost, we asked everybody to write down some reason for their hope. And that's all the colors of the blue and of the, I'm um, sorry, of the red and the orange and the green and the dark green and the light green. All reasons for our hope. And they all hang around the cross. The ultimate reason for our hope. So as we begin this year together, as we enter into this time of prayer, of learning, of preparation, of formation, Let's pray that we'll come to ever know more, know more God's great love for us. So much so that he gives us his son. He raises him to new life so that we can live.
One of my favorite saints is Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and he founded an order in the priests, uh, order of priests in the Catholic Church called the Jesuit priests. And um, he developed a retreat called the Spiritual Exercises, and it's a 30-day silent retreat. Let me just tell you that again. It's a 30-day silent retreat. So that means no phone, no computer, no TikTok, no Snapchat, no Twitter, nothing. Can you imagine people do this? I did this. Um, before I was ordained a priest, I did this 30-day silent retreat. And uh, it was one of the most powerful experiences in my life. And there's a part of the retreat the silent retreat, where you don't even talk to people. Can you imagine? Um, no phone. Seriously, no phone. People actually can do this. Um, there's a part of this retreat in the first week that St. Ignatius says, you have to really talk to Jesus. And you have to come to this moment where you really have a heart-to-heart -heart with him. And what he asks the retreatant to do is to find a crucifix and to pray before it, and to ask three questions. And so tonight, as part of our prayer, as part of our recognition of in that suffering and the dying and the rising of Jesus, we find new life in the Spirit, we're going to do that exercise together. And so just invite you right now to quietly kneel. So St. Ignatius would tell us that we take some time to look at the cross. And as we look at the cross, the cross that marks our church, to think about this day, to think about these weeks and months, to think about the story of your life, and to ask yourself in quiet, what have I done for Christ? Reflecting upon the past, I think of my life now. I think of the things that I am called to do for Jesus, the ways I try to serve him and love him by serving the other. I think of the ways that I pray. I think of the ways that I'm called in whatever way I can to do everything for him. In silence for a moment, I think of some of those things that I am doing for Christ. We should glory in the cross.
look at the cross, I think of those places that I have failed. I think of all the things that I could be doing for Christ. Where I could be praying more and serving more and caring for those in need more and being more Christ-like to the people I live with, those I share school with, those I share life with. In honest silence, as I look at the cross, I ask, what ought I to do? What should I be doing for Christ? We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Become aware of all the things that Jesus Christ does for us here and now. And St. Ignatius would tell us that any time we concluded the time of prayer, we would say these three prayers together. Prayers that I think you know, and if you don't, just ask you to do the best that you can. And so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. Please stand. Aware of our call to bring God's love to the world, let us present our needs to the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That God our Father may reveal his Christ to these candidates more and more with every passing day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. That these candidates may come to a deeper appreciation of the gift of their baptism which join them to Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That they may find in our family and parish communities compelling signs of unity and generous love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That their hearts and ours may become more responsive to the needs of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in due time, these candidates may be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Almighty and eternal God, whose love gathers us together as one, receive the prayers of your people. Look kindly on these, your servants, already consecrated to you in baptism, and draw them into the fullness of faith. Keep your family one in the bonds of love. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. So you know, uh, in a month or so, we're going to begin a different way of faith formation for the year ahead. And more details will come, and uh, it will be a living process. And I'm sure that as the year goes on, just as I'm sure these first weeks of school have seen, um, we will learn a little bit as we go. But we're going to do it together. And uh, the great spirit that you showed last year as we started something brand new is the same spirit we need this year as we adjust to something new, at least for a time. We are really privileged, I think you know, um, as well as I do, we had some awesome people who committed to you last year to serve as faith-sharing group leaders who looked out in ways to care for you and to come to know you and not so much worried about teaching you facts, but more about helping you to know that you're loved by God and part of a great community of faith. And we're really blessed tonight to have so many of those faith-sharing group leaders, those catechists with us tonight, um, who come to begin this celebration with you begin this year of celebration and work and formation with you um, and who have who are going to make a lot of great strides in terms of doing some new things um, in an effort to be present uh, to all of you we're really blessed that so many of them have returned and uh, that's a great testament to all of you and I know uh, that gratitude tonight extends to all of them and to all of our faith formation staff and Michelle Paraglia who you know like any leader of a educational thing has got to adjust to a million things and uh Tonight to Andrew and Stephanie for allowing us to pray um, so well. I hope that you have a crucifix in your house. And if you don't, you should get one. And if you can't get one, call me and I will get you one. And I would suggest that those three questions every day, what have I done for Christ? What am I doing for Christ? What should I be doing for Christ? Might just help you to stay on the right path in these days that can be overwhelmingly hard and difficult. So just uh, to ask you to continue to think about making that exercise, to look at a cross every day. It could take one minute. It doesn't need to be all with the lights and the kneeling and all that. It could be very, very simple. And allow yourself to just draw closer and closer to the God who wants to be so close to you. We're going to leave after the closing hymn. And I just ask that you stay in place and we'll kind of dismiss you by section. And that just helps us to keep some space and distance. And uh, as I said before the celebration, if you can lend us a hand for a few minutes uh, just to wipe down the pews, that would be a big help. And if you, when your section is called, um, if you would just go to the back and we'll give you a nice spray bottle and a beautiful towel. You can even keep the towel, all right? That's, that's the kind of people we are here, all right? Um, if you can help us out to clean the church, that's always a big help. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Please join in singing our closing hymn, Amazing Grace, found on the last page of your worship aid. Amen.